I started this walk, I wanted to carry a message. It wasn't the only reason why I did the walk, but I figured, you know what, 8,000 kilometers of walking, I might as well have a good answer as to why I'm doing this. So my message that I carried was freedom. This was a poster that was on my backpack for the last six months and a bit that my daughter made for me. And that was the, the Facebook hashtag. And all of the speeches that I've been doing from coast to coast have been freedom themed. Why freedom, you might ask? Well, to me, there is really no higher value or quality in life that we want than freedom. I've asked many people, and there hasn't been a single person who's ever said that freedom is not extremely important. And even lower animals value freedom. I can remember when I was a kid, years ago, fishing. I'd have a worm, and I'd stick the hook through it. And that worm would cringe. All of the animals that I saw as I walked, they hightailed it away from me because they, their freedom, I think, was threatened by me. So it's behind, it seems to be behind all that we do, freedom. Now, every talk that I did was a different aspect of freedom. And tonight I want to talk about the limits of freedom. And the reason why I want to do that is because unless we know our limits, we don't know where to push back or where to expand in our freedoms. Principally, I want to first of all define what I mean by freedom, and then I also want to talk about the limitations, two particular limitations, one being the constraints, the natural constraints to our freedom, and secondly, the constraints of our belief systems, both of which we can do something about. Now, first of all, to define what I mean by freedom, what I mean by freedom is the ability to act within what prevents us from acting. Picture, if you will, for a moment, a rooster inside of a cage. It will try to get out, it will bounce around. It has the ability to move, but is physically restrained by that box. And don't we feel that way sometimes in our own worlds, constrained by some reason? Now, the first constraint I want to talk about is the natural world constraints. The example of the rooster in the cage is a good example of that. But there are lots of forces of nature, some of which are other people in our world. But I really noticed this when I was walking, especially to do with the, the weather coming in, rolling clouds. I couldn't do anything about those clouds. I was subject to them. Only thing I could do was react and prepare for those situations. A couple of days ago, I was in St. John's and I was listening to a radio program on, it's called the Historic Radio out of uh, Mount Pearl. And they were talking about what they called the leaderless men, the, master, the masterless men. And these were people who escaped from the British ships during a time when England ruled the east coast of Newfoundland and there was a prohibition on anybody leaving the ship and settling because they didn't want a whole bunch of deserters. In fact, the penalty for deserting was the rope on the, on the masts of the ships. But yet, the conditions were so deplorable and the lack of freedom on the ship, many men escaped, most of them Irish slaves. And they climbed over the mountains and into the valleys and they made dead end runaways. So when the people would come looking for them, they would run down these runways into swamp, and they would abandon somewhere else and the troops would go into the swamps and they rarely caught them because the penalty for being caught was being hung. You see, but even though they had greater freedom, they still had limitations because they had to withstand the harsh winters. They had to live to learn, like, learn to live like the natives and so on. They still expanded their freedom, but they still had limitations. Now, as far as the belief systems, we can see this, can't we? We are born and we are taught how it is. We are taught religions. We are taught politics. We are taught nationalities. We are taught in schools. All sorts of information, which, if we just believe it without any questioning, we create our own boxes, our own boxes of what we believe in. And because of that, then we fight against the other people who've got another box of another belief. But when we become open-minded, we can begin to 
rationalize and say, okay, what's the value in this? Do I just have it because somebody else told me, or do I have it because there's value to it? These are questions that we can ask. And when we do that, we expand our freedom of those beliefs. In summary then, I hope that you see the value of freedom. I hope that my definition of it makes sense. And I hope that you see the value of observing the limitations of freedom. Because it's only when we observe our obstruction that we begin to push it back and expand it. And particularly, I think what's important is the physical constructs from nature, because we can do things about those as well. This building, for example, is a, a climate change from out there, because we built something to do something about the natural world. And the same thing with our beliefs. I think if we work on them, analyze them, we can expand them, and we can have greater freedom. Madam Toastmaster. <laughs>